Welcome back to Physics Teacher. In today's episode, I had a question in the comments, which was asking, in Al Gadoo, how do you um, plot a graph of one's velocity relative to another object? And so I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that in today's episode, so make sure you stay tuned. All right, so let's just start with some simple objects. We won't worry too much about the art here. We're just going to draw one ball here and another ball here. And for starters, let's take off gravity and air resistance. And let's give them each some sort of horizontal velocity. So for this one, I will give a velocity of, say, 3 meters per second in our positive direction, which would be to our right. And this one, let's give a velocity of... Let's go with 1 meters per second to the right. There. Now we can show those velocities. Right? I've done this before in one of my other tutorials. You can say view velocities, and you can show the values as well. And then when you play, there they go. But these velocities are relative to the ground. So this is 1 meters per second relative to somebody um, standing on the ground down here. Same with this, 3 meters per second relative to someone standing on the ground. And we can even plot those, right? I've shown you how to do plots before. You right-click, you click Show Plot. And this is for the, the larger ball. Um, we'll not, we won't do speed, we'll do velocity, because we care about direction, and then the X component. And we'll do the same thing for this one. Let's bring out a plot. Bring it over here and we will do its velocity as well in the x component. All right, so now when you play them, there you go. They are simply a horizontal line because they're moving at a constant velocity, and this is a VT graph or a velocity time graph. But again, both these graphs and these values are all relative to the ground. And the question is, how would I create a graph of a VT graph of one object's velocity relative to another? So let's first talk about relative velocities, because it's a very, very important point in physics. There is no preferred frame of reference for the laws of physics. All physics work in all frames of reference, all inertial frames of reference anyways, um, which I talk more about that in one of my grade 12 physics videos that you can check out. Um, inertial frame of reference just means a frame of reference that is a non-accelerating frame of reference. Um, but we can still, I can show you how to plot graphs as well of one object's velocity relative to another, even if there's acceleration there as well. So in this case, we have this object. Right? Let's just call this object 1. So object 1 is moving at a speed of 3 meters per second east. And object 2, let's make that smaller pink one, is moving at a speed of 1 meters per second east. So what would be the speed or the velocity of object 1 relative to object 2? And these are all vectors I should be putting my vector sign. Well, this is something called the chain rule. So what I've done here, I said the velocity of 1, but what it really is, is the velocity of 1 relative to the ground and that's one way of writing it same way as this one this is the velocity of object two relative to the ground and so if you wanted to add things right you can do for example the velocity of one relative to two plus the velocity of two relative to the ground we sort of match identical numbers or letters there symbols and form a chain so it's a chain rule chain called the chain rule and this leaves us with the outer one, velocity of 1 relative to the ground. So this is adding vectors using the chain rule. But we, what we want to find is the velocity of 1 relative to 2. So the velocity of 1 relative to 2, just rearranging, is the velocity of 1 relative to the ground minus, bring this term to the other side, the velocity of 2 relative to the ground. So in our example here, the velocity of 1 relative to the ground is 3 meters per second east. 
uh, sorry, the velocity of one relative to the ground is, um, yeah, three meters per second east. Subtract the velocity of two relative to the ground, which was our pink one, so one meters per second east. And they're in the same direction, so that just leaves us with two meters per second east, which means the velocity of ball one relative to ball two. So this pink ball sees the brown ball moving at two meters per second east. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of this, how do we graph that? Well, in this case, uh, because the um, velocities are constant, you can just do a graph of yourself. That's the horizontal line at two meters per second east. But let's look at an example where we have acceleration. So let's change this one up here. I'm going to move this ball here and this one here. Let me get rid of their velocities to start. Bring them to zero. And then I'm going to make this one move upwards with an initial velocity of four, for example. And let's have this one move upwards with an initial velocity of one. And let's turn gravity back on. And after we clear our graphs, we'll set it to measure the y component of velocity. So we'll do that for both the y component. All right, so now when we hit play, that's what we get. We get two graphs. Notice that they both, neither of them start at the origin. Uh, they're both um, diagonal graphs, which makes sense, right? The slope of that diagonal should be um, negative 9.81 meters per second squared because I haven't changed the value of acceleration yet, so it should be set to that of Earth. But how do we graph the velocity of one relative to the other in this case? Now, as far as I know, there's no direct way to do that within Algadu, but it does have this really great feature. It says save as CSV file. So let's save it as a CFV file. And I'm going to show that file. And I'm going to open it up in Excel. Now it's a CSV file. If you don't have Excel, that's fine. You can do the exact same thing in Google Sheets. So I'm going to open that one up and I'm going to do the same for this one. Save and open that up. So it's going to give me all the data. Okay, and then we're going to use that data to create the graph of the velocity of one relative to the other. So let's open that second one as well. So now that we have them both open, you can see which one it is. This one starts with initial velocity of four, and that one starts with initial velocity of two. So those are our different balls, but I don't want two separate sheets. So I'm just going to copy all the data from one and then put it on the other so I can work with them together. So we'll just copy this and paste it here. All right, so this is the data that we're going to work with. Now, remember what we did before. It's the same rule. If we wanted to figure out the velocity of the first ball relative to the second, we take the velocity of the first one relative to the ground and subtract the velocity of the second one relative to the ground. So what I can do then here is I can do, say, the velocity. Let's make a title. Velocity... Um, of one relative to two. And if we're just calling this one and two, so we take the velocity of one and subtract the velocity of the second one. Now we don't want to do this one at a time, so we can write an equation here. So we write equals and then write our cell. This is B2, so we're going to write B2 and we're going to subtract uh, E2. E2. There you go. Makes sense. Four minus one is three. Uh, you don't have to type it in for every single one. There's a little square in the corner there. And if you click and drag it all the way down, it'll do it all for you like that. So notice when you click on any cell now, it says right here, this is B5 minus E5, B6 minus E6, B7 minus E6. And these are lots of important skills. And actually within the next week, I'm going to be um, posting two videos which I'm going to call Word Skills for Science and Excel Skills for Science, which are definitely useful um, if you're going into science or you're doing lab reports, things like this that you want to use to help you analyze. So check out those later. And so now we just need to graph this. Now the interesting thing is when you look at it, it's pretty much all three. And that's actually, um, you might have been able to figure that out, but it's actually quite interesting. 
if we go back here to the balls, initially uh, the difference is three, but because their acceleration is the exact same for both of them, no matter how their velocity changes, there will all be always be a difference of three between them. So this graph is actually probably going to be um, what you might expect now is just a horizontal line. But I'll show you still how to plot it so that if you ever have something that isn't a horizontal line, you'll be able to figure that out. So let's go back to Excel. So we want to plot time versus velocity. So I'm going to just hold down shift and get all of these. So our time for x axis. And then you can actually hold down the control key and get these as well without getting any of the other values in between them. There we go. And then we are going to go to insert and we're going to want to insert a scatter plot. So right over here we have our scatter plot and there we go. And there's your graph. Now you can change the values of this, so you can um, zoom out if you want to. Um, you can also do lines of best fit. All these things I'm going to teach you how to do on my later um, episode that I'll post on Excel skills for science. But I hope, I hope this has taught you how you can figure out how to plot a graph of the velocity of one object relative to another. Okay, if you want to learn more about those Word and Excel skills, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time.